Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today I have something very exciting to share with you guys, and that is my phone ringing. No, actually, my phone did ring, but the exciting thing is GeForce 3D Vision 2. So 3D Vision 2 is actually very similar to 3D Vision 1. Both of them involve glasses, both of them involve stereoscopic 3D gaming, both of them involve special monitors that operate at 120 hertz, and both of them are pretty freaking cool. However, 3D Vision 2 brings some serious new advantages to the table, some of which will actually even benefit users of 3D Vision 1. Stay tuned for more. Now most of the technology that makes 3D Vision 2 special actually is not in the new glasses, but rather in the monitors. So to get a monitor that supports 3D Vision 2, you need to find one with light boost technology. So light boost technology modulates the backlight of the monitor. In this case, this is the VG278, which has an LED backlight. So it modulates the backlight of the monitor in order to increase the brightness of the perceived image as well as to decrease the crosstalk between the left and the right image and the eye that's supposed to see them in the image that's supposed to go to which eye. Basically, it means you see less of the left image in your right eye, less of the right image in your left eye, and the whole thing is brighter. I have tried it. It definitely works. Normally, with 3D Vision 1, you'd throw on the glasses, you'd turn them on, you'd play your game. It would be really dim, everything looked really dark. The colors were still okay, but everything was way too dark. With Light Boost and 3D Vision 2, and for that matter, Light Boost and 3D Vision 1, yes, it is backwards compatible with your V1 glasses. It is dramatically different. One of the other cool things about this monitor, besides the LED backlit, is its matte screen, 27 inch size, which is kind of a 3D Vision 2 feature because compared to the V1 glasses, the V2 glasses have dramatically larger lenses. So that allows you to more effectively view a larger monitor without having the frames interfere. The other cool things about this monitor are the fact that it does support HDMI 1.4, which means you can watch 3D Blu-rays on it, and the fact that it has a 3D vision emitter integrated into the monitor itself, so you don't have to have that additional emitter brick next to your PC. It's got height adjustment, it's got swivel, it's got this kind of adjustment, I'm not sure, oh yeah, tilt, that's what that one's called, and I think that pretty much covers everything there is to say about it. It is 1080p. Remember guys, that is a limitation of the 3D Vision technology because DVI is only capable of delivering 1920 by 1080 or well rather 1920 by 1200 max at 120 hertz which is required for stereoscopic 3D. So for those of you who don't know, we're going to do a really quick setup guide for 3D Vision. It's exactly the same as it was before. You run the setup wizard within the NVIDIA control panel. You see that, yes, you have all the correct things, or you see maybe you're missing something. You click Next. You select what environment you're in. You can see it's detected that the emitter is already included in your monitor. What's cool about that too is it seems to be transmitting the data via DVI. You don't even have to plug in a USB cable in order to get 3D Vision running. So you press the on button on the glasses. This is an older, older 3D Vision 1 glasses here. So uh, the on button is now on the left side of the glasses right here. So you go ahead and press that button. Once you have a steady green light, you know that the glasses are switched on. You guys aren't going to be able to see that light. It's pretty dim on this model. However, you can see, if I point, okay, you can, hmm, you're not going to be able to see that. Whatever, they're on. Okay, then you go ahead and you test the hardware setup. So you close your left eye and you look through your right eye and you select which ones you can see. Do you notice any flicker? I do not. Sometimes that can be to do with the lighting in the room. You select which one you see. You tell it not to create a shortcut and finished. Now 3D Vision will enable itself whenever you launch a supported 3D game such as the one that we're using for our example today, Batman Arkham Asylum, which was one of the marquee titles back when 3D Vision launched for supporting 3D in a way that is very immersive and very cool. Guys, let's take a detailed look at the differences between the V2 and the V1 glasses. So NVIDIA says there are bigger lenses. I think we can pretty much take their word for this one. Although if we can't, we can clearly look at them and they are clearly significantly bigger. So what does this mean? It means that if you already wear glasses 
or if you have a larger format monitor like the 27 inch one beside me, you are going to be able to see more of the image in front of you and less of the thick frames that go around the outside of the glasses. Nvidia claims increased comfort. Once again, I'm with them on this one. You can see, actually probably the best way to view this is gonna be like this. You can see how narrow the V1 glasses, which are on the top, get compared to how narrow the V2 glasses get and the positioning. So on the V1 glasses, I often found that due to the way they bow out like this and then come in really tight at the back, I would have pressure on the back of my head here and if I tried to wear a headset, it would mush the glasses and the headset would sit funny or the glasses would sit funny and it was generally very difficult to get my gaming setup going. Whereas with the V2 glasses, you can see this is much more straight, less bowed, these don't come together as close at the end. See, look at that. These fit right inside the V2 glasses, okay? And they still have the rubber pads at the back, which allow them to sit without falling and without moving. So there's definitely a lot more room to install headphones on your head over top of the glasses. Another thing they've done is they've moved the emitter from the left-hand side of the glasses to the very middle, or the receiver rather, not the emitter, from the left-hand side of the glasses to the middle of the glasses. They've moved the power button from the top of the glasses to the left-hand side of the glasses. They've also sharpened up the overall aesthetic of the glasses quite a bit, I think. You've got these cool metal NVIDIA accents on the sides. You got one of those on the other side as well. The NVIDIA green is still present, although a little bit less prominent, which I think is probably not a bad thing. And hardware-wise, as far as the glasses go, that's pretty much it. They're still the same shutter technology and most of the 3D Vision 2 technology besides the um, lighter form factor, they are lighter, lighter, more comfortable glasses is actually in the monitor. So 3D Vision 2 gives you the lighter glasses, the larger lenses, light boost, which allows you to see a much brighter image and it does work. And it also gives you uh, less crosstalk between the left and the right stereo images. And it is backwards compatible with the V1 glasses, which is very, very cool. You still have that same huge library of 3D Vision supported titles. And I think that pretty much covers everything there is to say at this point in time. Thank you for checking out our NCIX Tech Tips on NVIDIA 3D Vision V2. And hopefully with a light boost enabled monitor, you guys have a chance to enjoy 3D Vision V2 at some time in the future, whether it's at a store, just trying it out, or whether you buy your very own and bring it home.